Lord knows who they are. Remember them. Let's, I, uh, in fact, I got a note here it's about Brother Ron Spencer. Him and his church has got it up there, and you know he's already had some problems with cancer and things, and now he's got the disease and having pneumonia and stuff. So just remember them all. Amen. It's just a bad situation. Also remember Brother Mark. He's still having problems with his ulcer. Remember that. Brother Anderson gave me said, please remember his family in California. As we all know, they're having all the fires in California and there's smoke everywhere. That's what he's saying here. That Just remember, and they're, they're having a hard time breathing. It's affecting his family, so remember that. Also, Brother Rhino gave me once, please continue to pray for my dad. He's having a procedure done tomorrow, and we'll have to stay in the hospital till next week. So remember Brother Rhino's dad with special prayer also. The only thing I have, I know we all have unspoken requests. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for letting us come out this evening, Lord. Lord, be with the ones that we've mentioned that may be traveling, Lord, wherever they may be, come down and bless them. Lord, be with the ones that are been affected, Lord, that we know of and having problems, Brother Ron Spencer and his church there, Lord, and we've mentioned other ones, Lord, that's been mentioned to us. Brother Joel Canada there, Lord, and his family, bless him and help him, Lord. And Lord, all the other ones that, Lord, that may be affected by this this problem that we're having, Lord, just come down and bless them. Be with the ones that Brother Anderson had mentioned, Lord, his family's been affected by the fire out there, Lord, can't breathe in the smoke, Lord, come down and help that and put that fire out and Lord, just remember all the other requests that we have mentioned. Just be with us and guide us. Be with the rest of the service. Be, be with Wade also, Lord. Bless him and give us the right attitude to listen to what's being said. Forgive us for all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You be seated. I'm on uh, page 8 in the spiral book this evening. Oh, I want to see him. Amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on through my must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let him lift my voice cares all pass home at last ever to rejoice when in service for my lord dark may be the night but i'll cling more close to him he will give me light satan snares may vex my soul turn my thoughts aside but my lord goes ahead please whatever be tied oh i want to see him look upon his face that will sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let him live my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when in valleys low I look toward the mountain high And behold my Savior there leading in the fight With a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low Guiding me I can see as I onward go Oh, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let him lift my voice cares all pass home at last ever to rejoice when before me billows rise from the mighty deep then my lord directs my bark he does safely keep and he leads me gently on to this world below he's a real friend to me oh i love him so oh i want to see him look upon his face that is sing forever of his saving grace there's a glory let me lift my voice 
cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Amen. Back up here to page number six. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Amen. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Let's all stand. It tells me what my father have in store for every day and though i tread a darksome path yield sunshine all the way oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus How I love Jesus because he first loved me. It tells of ones whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who each in sorrows bears a part that more none can bear below oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus because he first loved me Brother John Durant, could you help me with the offering this evening? If you don't mind, my brother. Remember, Brother Mark, and lift him up. Precious Lord, we thank you, Father, for bringing us once again, Lord, together in your name, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord. We come with expectations that you would speak to our hearts. Lord God, and just bless all your children today, Lord. We want to just also lift up Brother Mark, Lord, and his need. Father God, just touch our brother, Lord Jesus. We pray for all those who would need tonight, Lord God, just remember them, Father. Yes, Lord. Service. Touch us. Bless us, our brother, God. Lord, yes. use him in a mighty way. May he be a vessel, Lord God, just to speak to our hearts. Yes. Bless the tithes and the offerings that come in this evening. And may it be used for your honor and glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. May be seated. I'm at number four in the spiral, 94 in the spiral book. I'm sorry. Meeting in the air, Amen. You have heard of little Moses in the bull run. You have heard of Phaedr steering in his sling. You have heard the story told of dreaming Joseph and of Jonah and the well you often sing. There are many, many others through the Bible. 
I should like to meet them all, but I run the Lord will surely lead them at meeting in the air. There is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious, I do declare. And God as the Son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. Many things will be there, will be missing in that meeting, for the mourner's beach will have no place at all. There will never be a sermon preached to sinners, for the sinner had refused to heed the call. There will be no mourning over by the wayward love. There will be no lonely nights of pleading prayer. All our burdens, all our anguish will be lifted at that meeting in the air. Let's all stand. There is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious, I do declare. And God as the sun will be the leading one at the meeting in the there the doubters will be missing altogether. All the skeptics will be absent on that day. There will be no grumblers present to disturb us, and the Aikens will be busy far away. There the saint will have his seal upon their foreheads. Dressed in raiment, none will ransom, will can wear. All who have the wedding garment will be present at that meeting in the air. There is going to be a meeting me in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet you meet you over there in that home beyond the sky such singing you will hear never heard by mortal ear will be glorious i do declare and god as the sun will be the leading one in that meeting in the Amen. There's power in the blood this evening. Hey, Amen. would you be free from your burden of sin? We'll sing this and change over the service. Amen. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or Rick? You will victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the 
the blood Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide There's wonderful power in the blood There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb Would you be wider, much wider than snow There's power in the blood Power in the blood Sin stains are lost in the life-giving flow There's wonderful power in the blood There is power, power, wonder-working power In the blood of the Lamb There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb Would you do service for Jesus your King There's power in the blood Power in the blood Would you live daily His praises to sing There's wonderful power in the blood There is power Power, wonder-working power In the blood of the Lamb There is power, power, wonder-working power In the precious blood of the Lamb Amen. Glory. We'll change all the service this evening. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love your power and love as we sing holy 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 you are holy 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 I want to see Good to be in the house of the Lord. You look up and open your eyes and you think you're in the hospital. Got all these. Where'd that familiar giggle come from? Oh. Well, I thought it was Aaron Roberts. I didn't sound like Aaron was back there behind me. I guess not. All right. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to have everybody here on a Wednesday night. Good to see the Durrett family. I can't say I see your smiling face, but I see your smiling face. Amen. But good to have each and every one of you here. And, and uh, boy, we've come to a place that uh, everybody in the world, prayer request is so long you can't hardly remember it. And you, you, you pray until midnight almost, literally trying to call everybody's name. And sometimes you just don't get there because there's so many. Uh, Brother Joel is still fighting this thing, be 60-something days, and um, now um, there's another strain of virus going around, so 
Satan is the prince and power of the air. And this is where this is all, it's all traveling. But we're going to pray that we are going to be filtered. That God's going to filter this. Now, we've got to live in it, we've got to breathe, we've got to eat, we've got to touch doorknobs, got to go to work, we've got to do all these things. But we pray that God will help us and protect us and keep us safe. Amen. We, we believe He'll do that, right? Amen. Amen. So remember, we're still now in phase two, which is what you're looking at now. Everybody wear a mask except the preacher that's preaching, even downstairs. All right. There's some downstairs now, but Sunday we'll do the same thing. We'll be in phase two. We will be at 10 o'clock and at two o'clock as usual. And then we'll have communion after the second service. Now, don't worry about how we're going to do it. Just be here. Brother Dale now kind of decide and we'll pray over it all week just to see the safest way of of doing it and then we will definitely have communion though one way or the other amen so that's part of uh that's part of the ordinances that we go through and the part that i miss as much as anything else is to be able to you know brother branham <clears throat> even the bible tells us that if you take communion and you don't have things right in your heart, then you could be eating and drinking damnation unto yourself. I'll tell you a little story here just for a second. I, like I told you before, we've been, we, not we, me, I've been battling some stuff in my flesh for a while, you know, sickness and, and not, not sickness, but enough to bother you. And um, I told some of you my PSA level was up, but I went to the doctor and he said, don't worry about that. And then other little things going on, you know, but still you, you, when you lay at night and you still hear that you, you, you're laying there and you're saying, Lord, why are you not moving like your word says? It said you'll come on the scene, you'll heal the sick. And I keep hearing that quote where Brother Brown says, <clears throat> one unconfessed sin. Even Brother Brown talks about that in the prayer line. He tells them to go get it right. And remember, there was a portion there of somebody that was, that was sick and they had to go get something made right. Brother Brown said, or that devil's going to sit right there. Doesn't matter how much oil, pour 55 gallon drums of oil, all you want to and pray the prayer of faith, that's fine. But there's a lot of things that we go through in life that sometimes we forget about. But I'll promise you one thing. If God ever reminds you of something, you better go do it. Um, and this old boy has been, a, I have accused myself, I don't have to be accused of others, of being adamant about certain things in the scripture and about certain things in life and about certain preachers. And one preacher I've been real hard on in, in the past and and I called him yesterday. No, Monday. Sorry, it was Monday. I get mixed up. We were off on Monday. Monday. Called him Monday and I said, brother, I said, there's something been laying on my heart. And I said, I can't get an answer from God. I said, I've talked about, bad about you for several years because of certain things you, do, you did. And it was really none of my business. I said, I just want you to forget me. He said, sure, brother. He said, I got no problem. He said, actually, he said, bring your Bible and come preach for me. See, I said, brother. But the moral, I mean, the story is, yeah, it was hard to find the number. I didn't have the brother's number. I mean, he lives somewhere else. And I had to find his number. But I kept saying, Lord, something's got to move when we clear this thing out of the way. And that's the way you and I ought to do the same thing. If we're struggling, if we're having problems, I don't care if Brother Brown said, if it tears the hide off your back to pick up the phone and call somebody that you may have wronged, it don't matter if they knew about it because he didn't know I was talking about him, I reckon. I, and and, and it wasn't any of my business. He's not my pastor. Amen? So that's the same way I want to be with any of you. I want to apologize for anything I've said that's hurt your feelings. 
I don't want to hurt your feelings. Not anybody in this church. I do not want to hurt their feelings. I want us to grow up in God. And, and if you've made, if God's made Brother Dale and myself the spiritual leadership of this church, then we're supposed to act like it. And we're supposed to call out things when it needs to be called out. But we're not supposed to talk about it in a group over here. We're not supposed to talk about it even to our wives at home. There's nowhere in the Bible and there's nowhere in the prophet's message where you're to discuss anything with your wife about problems going on in different places, especially in the church. Everybody got that? Now, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just telling you, we, I went through, listen, there's a, you say, well, Brother Wade, what are you doing? You got to put it back to the Word because Brother Brown said that demon will sit right there right. until you get that taken care of. Right. And Brother John, it was like, it was like being born again all over again Monday when I hung that phone up. Amen. That thing lifted off of me. Amen. And it was, oh, yeah, it was hard. But I'll never do it again by the grace of God. Each and every one of you, stick a sock in my mouth if I start talking about it. I don't want to talk about nobody. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Now, what we have to talk about here in this church, different matter. You misbehave in this church, you're going to answer to Brother Dale. So we have, to, we have to do that. But as far as there should be nothing discussed outside of us brothers getting together and discussing it on our own. Because it'll lay there, and that thing's laid there for several years. And I paid for it. But now, we're moving on. I'm not saying the problem's completely gone. I, I feel like I got maybe a hernia down close to my groin and when I work and you know me I get up as soon as I get finished with my mail route I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the, uh, in the garden picking okra and everything else and, but uh, we're going on with God God said if you'll clear the slate so I've cleared my slate how about you can you pick up a phone and call somebody and say brother I'm sorry I've said something about you I've talked about you behind your back, and I apologize because 99% of the time, it's hearsay. It's hearsay. Right? And hearsay is what? Not admissible in a court of law. Only what? Eyewitness. Now, if I witness something and you eyewitness something, you have a right as a Christian to say something, either to your brother or to your sister, but not to a crowd not to four or five people out in the parking lot or call somebody on the phone and say, do you know what brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so did? What am I trying to do? We're trying to clear a slate so we can get out of here. We, we've got so much. What did Paul tell us? He said, what? Get rid of the sin that so easily beset us. Easily. So it's an easy thing to fall in this trap. And I'm up here today in front of the world apologizing for for doing that, and, and God forbid that I try to do it again. Because we should be shoulder to shoulder. That's why that thing right there, Brother Donnie, is up there right at the top. Brotherly kindness. Brother Branham, he was a man that had brotherly kindness. You didn't know. And I don't believe he talked about brothers. I believe he pulled them off to the side and maybe spoke to them. But I don't believe he was that way. And I, and I apologize for, for being that way. And I just... I, I sleep better now. I feel better. Just by a phone call. Didn't cost a dime. Amen. Right. Nothing. Just a phone call. Say, hey, man, I'm sorry. We're brothers. And then the brother just said, hey, bring your Bible next time you're up this way and preach for me. So you see, <clears throat> that was so easy. But yet it's so hard. What? To admit you're wrong. Right. To confess your sins. Mama. Right. Or whatever, uh, comes here for a while. And I didn't mean anything by it, but one day I said, What's your name? And she said, A, hey, uh, you know, a white girl's name. Yeah. And so she, she, a lot of blacks use different names. But anyway, I told her, I said, Well, you've got a beautiful white girl's name. 
Right. Right. That's what we need to do. We need to practice it. If you have anything, I'll promise you, if you're a child of God, I'll promise you God is obligated to bring that to your attention. And if you brush it off, the iniquity is on you. And you will deal with it. Now, whether you go through dry places spiritually or whether he what? He lifts off that thing and lets Satan play with your body for a little while. Because see, Satan's a master at manipulation. And he manipulates your body and he'll crawl in your mind. And like I said before, a couple of Sundays ago or whenever it was, you know, you, you, you get this little thing sitting here that says, you know, you're going to die because you have this and you're going to. But you know what? It's a lie. It's unfounded. It's, you know, let the doctors do their job and then let God do his job. So that's what we're not going to talk about that tonight, but we're still on the two spirits. But it does have something to do with those two spirits. Those two spirits. I'm not fighting an adulterous spirit to go out and commit adultery against my wife. Okay? I'm fighting a spirit that's in here. And I say in here because it's in all of us. That's why I keep, I want to keep going back and I'm going back and going back because I want you to understand one thing. Satan is not some demon that looks like a demon that we paint. He's a pretty angel. He's beautiful. He is an angel of light. He will tell you every truth except one word. He can't hold that word, word for word. That's why that I believe when we talk about this this, this evening, we get to it if we don't, that's okay. On where God said, let there be light. And there was light. You know that light is a form of energy. And energy can neither be created or destroyed. So, Brother Luis, it wasn't that the switch got turned on. That light always was there. That light, not the sun, that light was always there. Because it's what? It's energy from God Almighty. Can't be destroyed. And it, science even says it can only be changed from one form to another. And that's exactly what he did. He changed from one form to another to bring that light inside of me and you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening that you give us to be here. We pray, Lord, that you will give us a rejuvenation of strength, Lord, here in the middle of the week on Wednesday night. We fought the battle for Monday and Tuesday and part of the day today, Lord. Now we got another battle coming up. But, Lord, we win regardless of how many fall on the wayside, regardless of how many put a sling around their arm and, and as we say, wo uh, just wobble their way to the end, we made it because you told us that we would make it, that there would be no weapon formed against us that would prosper. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Father, we ask you, Lord, truly to forgive us of our sins and our mistakes that we make in life. We're human beings, Lord, but we, sh we have a spiritual rudder called the Holy Ghost inside of us that keeps us checked up. That, Lord, keeps us in the right path to where sometimes we might want to do something different. And you feel that little check. Well, thank you, Father, for that little check. Because a bastard child will not get that kind of correction. But, Lord, a real child, a real son and daughter of God will be corrected and brought back into the way as the prodigal son. He was always a son, but he had to be brought back. He had to get to the lowest of low. He had to be where sometimes we think you're not even there to listen, Lord, but we know what you're doing. You're training us up. You're getting us ready, Lord, to fight the greatest battle that's ever been fought, and that's the battle between life and death. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Be with us. Take care of us. Lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit through this service. 
You be the speaker, Lord. Be the active participant in Jesus' name. Amen. So just take that little tidbit and see how it'll work. It stings, but you know what? Feels good afterwards. It really feels good. I mean, it does. You know why? Because the burden's been lifted. I thought Jesus said, put your burdens on him. <clears throat> but there's a way you got to do that. You can't just throw the burden on him and say, well, I'm not going to repent, but here, no. There's a way to do everything. All right? There's a way to do everything. And we as Christians, we should know how to live. But we do forget. I'll never forget. I was reading a quote the other day, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably maybe, maybe put it back in here. Brother Branham, you know, he told us, and I know you're standing, but that's okay. You've been sitting for 30 minutes. You can stand for 30 minutes. Brother Brown told us, he said, he said, you know, we got to this place that we look at things and we go, wow, you know, that, that happened that way. And we have to realize that all things work together for good. Uh, you know, I don't know what Brother Joel's going through and all the different things that we are all going through. But I read that scripture in Isaiah 40, and Brother Brown reads it many times. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. They that wait upon the Lord. Amen. So we as Christians, we should know how to do it. But what Brother Brown said, let me get back to that. Brother Brown said, he said, there was a Holy Ghost veil over Adam and Eve. We know that, right? Because they were both naked and they didn't have any sexual desire. Everything was what? Pure. All right. Well, we have that same Holy Ghost veil, but we have a flesh attached to it after the fall. And Brother Branham says, our mind gets clouded. He said, the earth got clouded after the fall. And he said, there's a murky fog that's going to stay there. Remember, Brother Branham said, this thing's going to be sticky all the way to the end. That's kind of what he's talking about. That murky fog is what? The fall. That's, that's where God can't come down and and change your body yet, but, but glory to God, we're, gonna, we're getting there. Right, yeah. Amen. That cloud's going to lift. Right, right. That cloud's going to take off one day, and as that cloud lifts, we're going to lift with it. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But we got to learn to live right down here. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Brother Brown said, he said, don't preach me a sermon, live me one. Right, yeah. Now, I've done a pitiful job, and I apologize. Right. But you know what? I'm not worried about the past anymore. You just continue forward. That's the same way you do. Don't look back. Just keep going on. Forgive me, Lord, for what I did. It was a test and a trial. And if I'd have been a bastard child, guess what? He wouldn't have been there to correct me. Because you don't have to. Because you're not in the family. Amen. So let's read 1 John, the two spirits, let there be part two. Maybe we'll get to this. We're going to fly through this pretty quick. This I've already took up. Too much time. First John 4 verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. Now we know we explained that. That's not every drunk or any prostitute that will tell you that Jesus has come in the flesh. And that's not true. That, confet that word confesses is logos or the spoken word. So that's what we are. When you confess by what? By that thing that's inside of you. By that new birth that's inside of you. If you confess that Jesus is coming to flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist now, remember, it's so close. It, I keep wanting to go back to the beginning. There stands Satan and God. And if you were to be an onlooker and a bystander, you really couldn't tell. I mean, it wasn't like that Satan standing there with, with dark and gloomy and, you know, big claws. And No, he's a beautiful angel. Listen, he took two-thirds of the angels of heaven that God created and told them a lie. And they believed it. Because he was so beautiful. He must be true. Anyway. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus should come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. That was AD 96. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Like I said before, how many conversations have you walk up to and that you used to be uh, privy to and you could talk about the sports and the betting and the gambling and what's on television and what's on the news and what's on... Right now, that should be all vague. That should be nothing that concerns you. That, could be, that should be something that you walk up and walk away from. Right. Amen? And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You may be seated in the Lord at his blessing. Thank you for standing for a moment. Let's get through this real quick. I don't want to get through too quick, but I want these are just quotes that we quoted before till we get to uh, Genesis chapter 1. Because remember, Genesis is the seed chapter of the Bible. Everything began in Genesis. Brother Brown said the Catholic Church began in Genesis. Christ, Antichrist. If you got Antichrist, that's where it started. Where did it start? You know where the Antichrist started at? Not on earth. Not in the Garden of Eden. It started in heaven. The Antichrist came from Christ. That's the problem. Satan can't make himself Christ, but if you're born again today, you are Christ. He can't stand that. He hates that, that he can't do what you do. And he'll bore your brain one of these brothers that he'll. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Ezekiel 28 verse 11 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. You don't have to bear with long arms back there. He's the only one, I think, is working, so uh, be with him. Brother Anderson, we good. Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up to some, look, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in the garden, the garden of God, Eden, the garden of God. Two trees. He was as, I mean, he was as much welcome in the garden as anybody else was. Amen. I mean, right here he is. He said, he didn't, now thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, diamond, barrel, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold. And Brother Joe sent me a thing, and I didn't bring it. I was going to bring it out here. That that's only nine, and there's 12. Or there's, you know, there's 12 of different lights because it's the 12 tribes. And there's three of them that Satan can't be. So I will maybe bring that later on, but we didn't want to bring it tonight. The sapphire, the emerald, carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. God created Lucifer. God is the only creator no one else can create. Only God can create. So he created a life. And it was inhabited in a man named Lucifer, son of the morning, beautiful, Amen. worship angel, God's song leader. Yeah. Why do you see all this now out in the world called fellowship centers and worship centers? And, and uh, even heard, this has been several years ago, but when I was working at the poultry plant, there was a brother come in. And you know how Brother Brown said that the Pentecostals used to just shout the whole service and then they'd shout so much the preacher didn't get to preach. Well, this, ba just even the Baptist. And he said, oh, we had such an anointing this Sunday and we sang for two and a half hours and said the preacher didn't even get to preach. Now, folks, you can't put, you can't put singing over the word of God. That means that you've exalted Satan above Christ because Christ is the word. If you have no word there, you can sit and sing all you want to, right. all right? But now look, there's got to be a balance. We know that. Brother Brown, give us the balance. Two or three songs in before service, maybe a special, then sing afterwards. We know how that is, and that's what we do. But Satan wants you to sing so much that you forget about the Word of God. That's his job. And not, not, not rap music. Louise, hip-hop? No. He's closer than that. He's closer than that. That's what I want you to see. He's so close, he almost deceived me and you. Let's read demonology number one. You know there's false. There's a true and false of everything. If I give you a dollar, I'll say this is a good dollar, and you look at it. 
it'd have to look pretty much like a real dollar or you wouldn't believe it. Is that right? So I have to be really a good imitation. And if Jesus said the two spirits in the last days would be so close till it would deceive the very elect, if possible, religious people. Right. Now, remember, now there ain't nothing out there in them cold, formal, outside. They have just a form of godliness, you see. But these two spirits are real spirits. It'd be so close till it deceived the very elect. How it was working side by side in the last days, did Jesus say that? He did. And then look, by the opening of the seven seals, Brother Branham saw how close it was. When he saw that white horse rider come from where he was and then ride off. Yeah, praise God for riding off, but I'd be scared to death to know he was right there at one time. Amen? So there's your, and then he, you know, he, after that he said, you know, everything comes into perspective. The, why he was so much against organized religion, why he was so much against that religious system, why it was an antichrist system. They hate to say that, but it is. That's what it is. It, one more, and we can be the same thing. An exposition of the seven church ages. This is one we're always going to read because I believe it is a mandate to this church right now, not the church's past. This church sitting here today, breathing as hard as we can through these masks. This is a mandate that me and you Remember, Christ in the true church. I'm going to decide that I'm going to be in the true church. Okay, that's a decision that you have to make. Christ in the true church is a continuation of the book of Acts. But the book of Revelation shows how that the Antichrist spirit would come into the church and defile it. Make it lukewarm. Formal and powerless. See, we lost our power by just what I was talking about. We, we, how can you use the power of the Word of God when you got that one little thing right there? You know, in between. One little thing. Brother Brown said unconfessed sin. One unconfessed sin can make a whole church fail. Why? Because God can't move. He'll move to a certain spot and then he stops. But he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us to break that thing. So maybe we can have a revival. Maybe we couldn't have one before. Maybe we can have one now. I mean, I'm saying we, I'm saying me can have one because remember, it's a personal revival because you sure do feel a lot better because Satan's been for about two weeks, he's been banging on his flesh. Not so much where you can see it, but what's the worst sickness in the world? Right here. That's where the greatest battle's ever fought. Not here. This thing's just getting older and it's got aches and pains, but when Satan gets inside your brain and starts a merry-go-round, that's the worst thing in the world you can have. And I've never been depressed, and you know I've never been depressed. I've never had depression, but I have never had anxiety either, but now I can't say that. I've had a couple of anxiety attacks, and it ain't fun. It's an attack. I don't know why I'm on this, but it's an attack. And it attacks your mind. It attacks. And you know what? The best thing you can do is, is do what I said. Get all that out of the way. But then you got to read your Bible. You got to study. You got to come to church. Why do you think God ain't moving in your life? If we look out here and you're not in church. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. All right. One unconfessed sin. It exposes Satan, revealing his works. See, this is exposing Satan. You say, oh, brother, wait, you're just telling us about your life. No, this is exposing a demon. And there's not just one of them. Many of us have been through this. And maybe going through it or maybe fixing to go through it. But if you can't get anything from God, first thing to do is start checking your life. Is everything okay? Is everything all right? One unconfessed sin. It exposes Satan revealing his works, attempted destruction of God's people, and the discrediting of God's word. Now, he's not going to tell you God's word's wrong. He's going to discredit it. Amen? 
This Antichrist spirit is so close till he quotes the word. He quotes quotes. He brings you the word letter. But where's the power behind it? He fights it. He cannot stand it. He knows that if the people get the true revelation of the true church and what she is, not a church out there, not a church with a building, a church, what she is and what she stands for, that she can do the greater works, she will be an invincible army. If they get a true revelation of the two spirits within the framework, what is framework? This building has a framework. Brother Gary Krantz put a lot of this framework up. What? It's inside the wall. But it's inside this church. That wall, that framework is right here. The framework is right here. Remember, this is framed by the fall. But that thing inside of you is not. Now, if you're not born again, it's one and the same. And you're lost. But if you're born again, you've got one spirit in here and you've got another spirit beating it out, beating you out here. Amen? Is that all right? Listen, there's Holy Spirit and unholy spirit. A lot of things I do are unholy. You say, oh, no, now we ain't talking about cussing and drinking. We're just talking about doing little things. Little things. Little what? Foxes that spoil the vine. But these two spirits, if they get a true revelation of the two spirits within the framework of the Christian church, we're not fighting Methodists and Baptists and Pentecostals and message churches and people that don't preach right and people that says we need to listen to take. We're not fighting them people. We're fighting the spirit that motivates those people. Listen, that's why I said before, don't cry out against a person. Cry out against the spirit that's motivating that person. That's why Brother Branham, uh, uh, who was it, the the preacher that just said, oh, fooey, I'm going to drink beer and uh, whoever he was, you know, Brother Branham didn't say, well, now, oh, bless God, he's lost, he's out of here. No. He told us what happened. He even talked to the guy, I believe. But he said he died about six months later because he wouldn't. Now, see if he'd have turned because remember, I remember one time Brother Branham was uh, talking about somebody that had left the fold. You go, oh. But he said, what did he say? But now I went and got him. And he's safely back in the fold. You see, that's, that's a backslider. That's somebody that's done wrong. And he went out there and said, Brother, God bless you. Not cast the demons on top of him. Go out there with what? Brotherly kindness, brotherly love. That's what we're going to work on. We've got to work on that because it's right there at the top of that pyramid. We need to work on that. The framework of the Christian church and by God's spirit discern. Now, see, there it is. Discern. And withstand the Antichrist spirit. Satan will be powerless before her. Forget about politics. Forget about the economy. Forget about all this stuff that's going on. That's not the Antichrist. The Antichrist you need to worry about is the one you're going home with tonight. And I ain't talking about your wife or your husband. Everybody goes looking. He he will be definitely thwarted today as when Christ withstood. Now, you see that prophet, he put us in a position to where Satan came to Jesus and Jesus defeated him by what? The Word. Defeated him by the Word. Just quoted the Word back to him. Just quoted and Satan left him. Number three, an exposition of the seven church ages. <clears throat> He's reading in Jude 3. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it is needful for me to write unto you and exhort to you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men, this is part of the scripture, not saints, but this is Brother Brown's quote, Crept in unawares, these have not come into the fold by means of the door and are therefore robbers, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation by foreknowledge, ungodly men. Now, not ungodly men going to walk into this place and, and be a pervert. 
You understand what I'm saying? That's why I keep going over and over this again. We're waiting on some guy to walk in and try to pervert you. No. It's a spirit. Right. And he's slick. Yeah. And he's sly. Right. And he slides in. Right. A snake slides. Right. 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 Slithers. Right. He gets right up beside you. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you deny the word, you deny God. Right. You deny the word, you deny God. These are feast, spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you. Now, I didn't make that, a I didn't make that bold letters. That come out of the church age book with bold letters. Because they're feasting with us, feeding themselves without fear. Now, then again, I don't want anybody to say, oh, Brother Wade's talking about somebody in this building. I'm not. I'm talking about a spirit. And it takes many forms. It cannot be denied. Now, this is the quote. It cannot be denied in the face of these scriptures that the true church and the false church are intertwined. Having been planted together, where was it planted? Garden of Eden. There's where the division. It wasn't planted on earth. We ain't talking about no natural seed. Spiritual. The problem is Satan had to come and pervert what God created. He couldn't create a perverted seed. God said all souls are mine. Amen. Satan can't create one, but he sure can pervert it. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? He did that for me for 30-something years. I'm pretty much whatever, whatever you were too. He perverted it for a good long period of time. Maybe some of you not, but some of us were just a little bit harder-headed. And it took just a little bit longer. But you know what? We came at the time we're supposed to come. All right, so now we're going back to the, back before the beginning, as we were talking about before. Because we got to get back, we got to get to earth to make this come to manifestation. Because, there, listen, again, there is not two seed lines natural. Everybody got that? Say amen. amen. There has never been two seed lines natural that God said, I hate that one and I love that one. Natural. You hear what I said? Not, there is no natural. Listen, we're all born dead. Once the beast did what he did, I say Satan or Lucifer vicariously threw the beast, made him do that because he didn't do it. He'd been living for years and years and years and never touched Eve. Amen? But when Satan, what, perverted him, into planting a natural seed, he thought he could do something with that. Well, he's not a creator. That's what stumped the old devil when Cain was born. God had to give him a soul. God had to he give Cain a soul. You think the devil did? No, the devil can't create. God gave Cain a soul. Now, what perverted it? Cain perverted it, or what Cain did perverted it, all right? Because what was the situation between Cain and Abel? One was righteous, one was not. It was because of what they did, not... Listen, they both came out of the same womb. Eve. Both of them came out of the same womb. One was an illegal act. And one would have been an act, whatever you want to say, later on, had Adam and Eve got together. I don't believe sex was involved in the original, except in the animal kingdom. We weren't supposed to come by sex. Sex is our problem. All right? <clears throat> so let's go. Number four, questions and answers on Genesis. Everybody all right? I want us to cast light. I want us to be illuminated by these by us, uh, have you ever done this before? Have you ever tried to, Brother Brandon was the greatest storyteller, and I don't mean by sh telling stories lies. I mean a, the greatest storyteller ever. Right, right. He can make you think you were standing in the Garden of Eden right beside Adam and Eve. Right. Exactly. He'd make you think you was on the mountain with Moses. Right, right. And he told it so slow till you didn't miss a detail. Right, right. Thank God he was Southern. He was a little bit northern. We might have to rewind a few, few times. But he spoke my language, Brother Donnie. I don't know about y'all, but he told it slow. But remember, 
You know why? Because he caught the mind of God. He was a prophet. I know that, but you and I can catch the mind of God. And you can just, I can literally see someone standing in nothingness and saying, let there be. But I can also see a form standing there beside of him called Lucifer because he created him first because he's his right-hand man, right? So there's Lucifer the whole time. The whole time God created heaven and earth. Stars, everything. He was there. He didn't create him later on down the line. He created him as right-hand man because Satan was going to help him. Not help him create, but he said, I made you perfect. I anointed you. I made you beautiful. Something to admire. That's why John admired that whore church in the book of Revelations. Brother Brown said the angel had to turn him away from that. Beautiful church that was the whore. All right? Questions and answers on Genesis. <clears throat> the first creation was God himself. Then out of God came the Logos, which was the Son of God. Then out of the Logos, which was the Word... Beginning was the Word, Word was with God, and the Word was with God. <clears throat> and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Out of the Logos came forth the man. Who's he talking about? The Genesis 126 man. Everybody okay with that? Amen. All right. Because the Genesis 126 man is just an extension of God. It's not a different person. It's not another creation. It's not something separate from God. It's that light that we're talking about that doesn't, it's not created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to the other. Right, so God changed his form. Right, yeah. Yeah. Just like Jesus Christ is almighty God. God just changed his form. Right, he didn't change his person. He didn't change his personality. Listen, if Jesus would have come just a regular normal person, he'd have been just like me and you. He'd have fought this word. Because in your humanity and in your fallen condition, we fight this word. You say, no, I don't. Yeah, you do. Every time you did what you did, you fight the word of God. I'm talking about when you were not born again. All right. <clears throat> so the first creation was God himself. And out of, the God, out of God came the Logos. What was it? Not another God. It was just God stepped over. Now, remember, as we said before, and I'll read it here in just a little while. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Do you know that the sun goes down eight minutes before we see it go down? It rises six minutes because it takes six minutes to go 93 million miles, light traveling at 186,000 miles per second. Now, second, I'm talking about but it takes six minutes. That's how far that sun is from the earth. It takes six minutes for that light to get here because light travels. Listen, light's just not here. Light travels. Light, is, light has an origin and it travels. Oh, you ought to see something. You ought to see something with that. Light originates from somewhere and it travels. And you, it gives off photons and neutrons and, Lord, it's all kind of things and things banging into each other and, and all that if you want to study it, but I don't have time. We just need to stay in the spiritual aspect because, remember, there was an S-O-N before there was an S-U-N. Right. Amen? There was an S-O-N before there was an S-U-N because it gave light first. The S-U-N gave light later. All right, here we go. <clears throat> So Ezekiel 28, verse 11 says, Son of man, take up a lamentation. And the king of Tyrus, we already read this before, and he's beautiful. For thou was created. Thou art the anointed. Let's go down to verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. Now, who anointed him? God anointed him. The original anointing that Lucifer received was from God because he can't create. So he, so he had to get this anointing from God. But once he got this anointing, can you imagine being God? You say no. But could you imagine, though, that anything you think of, anything. Brother Brown said, if God said, let there be fleas, he said within five seconds, they would be 
30 miles all the way around this world and he'd destroy this world with fleas in five seconds. But it's all under control. You say, what are you saying, Brother Wade? He, he, God has limitless power. But he decided, see, God made a choice to limit himself. He's a father and he's all these different things, but he had to limit himself just like, you know what? Why? I'm not going to scare you, but why? Oh, that's, why does that not keep going? That's light. Why didn't that just keep going? There was no power behind it. But take somebody like God Almighty, you can't turn him off and on. He stays on all the time. Amen? And he just keeps going. Do you know I was reading just a few minutes ago that it takes 40,000 years. 40,000 years. Man has somehow figured this out. It takes 40,000 years to whatever we see in the sun, whatever emanates from the inside of that core of that sun, photons and molecules and all these different things, it takes 40,000 years for it to get to the surface to light the sun. 40,000 years. You think God's got patience? He created that thing a long time ago. And it's been given sunlight for at least 6,000 years. It's never not come up. Amen? And that's a created thing. But let's see where it came from here. If we ever get to it, Brother Luis, we'll get to it. Verse number five. Look at number five. Thou was, wait a minute. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What is iniquity? Doing something knowing you shouldn't or go and do something that you know you shouldn't do and you do it anyway. That is a hideous sin to God. That's iniquity. All right? That's why the mystery of iniquity under the first seal was is that that thing stayed right here if you didn't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost to get that thing to ride off from you. All right? <clears throat> thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. God set him right there. Now Satan, wasn't, that's what I said before, God's got this unlimited power. Why didn't he just look over and go, I think I'll make another one. And no, he wanted to use that one. Because when God does something, he does it perfect. You say Satan was perfect? I just read to you, the Bible says he was perfect. Somewhere in here, one of them it says, Thou were perfect. It's in there somewhere. It, maybe it's in that other one. Right here. When thou was created, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Right. Thou what there it is. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created right. till iniquity was found in thee. Right. Oh my. Number five, did you know that in heaven that the devil was God's right-hand man in the beginning, that Lucifer, the son of the morning, was given power? And the reason that he brought sin into the world, he was able to take something that God had created. Lucifer's sitting there and he's going, wait a minute, I can't use the stars. I can't use the moon. I can't use the trees. I can't use the grass. I can't touch that tree of life. But I got a little knowledge because I see the animals procreating by what God told them. Every seed would bring forth of its kind. Everybody got that? Say amen. That's what Satan entered in right there. He said, ha, I think I can get to the human race that way. And that's exactly what he did. Listen, we're not dealing with a second class. We're not dealing with a, with a, a second grader. We're dealing with somebody that has perfected his skill over thousands and maybe even hundreds of thousands of years. So don't think we can defeat him. But God can. All right, let's go back. Um, and the reason that he brought sin into the world, he was able to take something that God had created, what? The animals or the beast, and pervert it back into an evil thing which started all this trouble in the beginning. Then God, before the foundation of the world, was ever laid. When he seen what Satan done, foreknowledge, 
He was co-worker, partly equal with him. Only Satan could not create. God is the only creator. But Satan took something that God created and perverted it back into something else evil. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Now, who is Michael? Michael is Christ. It's just God in another form. Like I said before, he runs faster than the 186,000 miles per second. God, you know why? Because he created that. Anything that created that has got to be faster than that. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. When he can be standing in one place right here tonight speaking to you and he can be in the jungles of Africa visiting them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the same God. He didn't send another God over there. It's the same God. But he's traveled over there so fast. That's why I believe that God let Brother Branham see these dimensions and see how fast they're, they're just faster things. Listen, when God came into this dimension, he had to slow down after the fall. He had to slow down because we're at a crawl. And he's just like, travel the universe. Even Brother Brown, remember, he told us, he said, you've got the creative power to you what? Go create a world. Now, he didn't say you needed a jet or a, or a rocket to get there. He said, create a world and go live on it. What? Boom, boom. Right here. Because that's what's going to change us. We don't realize what we already got, not what's coming. It's what we've already got. We've just, it's so... We got so much fog around it. It's a foggy place. But let there be light. All right, you okay? The right hand man. Where are we at? Revelation. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. Now, kids and adults, they were not up there. Like I said before, they weren't having a WWE, World Wrestling Federation, or a MMA knockdown drag out. No. It was the word. Satan preached his word. Michael preached his. It was the spirits that's fighting. Today we're not fighting each other. You're fighting a spirit. You can be fighting a spirit and you don't even know it. May I quote you, Brother Brown said, told that brother, he said, you fought your way here to this meeting. And brother said, I just got in the car and come to work, come to the meeting. Why? Brother Brown saw in that other dimension the fight that was going on, the spiritual battle that was going on for that guy to get here. Listen, this whole, listen, don't you think for one second, for one second, that Satan's not after you. He has sent a demon to personally be with you just like God sent an angel for you to be. And you know what they're doing? They're fighting what? By words. My words is what condemn me, not my physically beating the person up or getting beat up. Sometimes that's too easy. But you see those scars because you see it outside. But what about those inside you can't see? Amen? We've got to get rid of those things, folks. It'll kill us. And prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now what? Is the morning dark? No, the morning sunlight. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will descend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. Now listen, there's where we got to the difference like we were talking about with Dathan and Korah and, and um, Jethro. Because God told us we could sit on his throne. See the difference? God told us we could. God told us we were gods. God told us we were little creators. God told us we were little messiahs. But Satan says, I'm going to exalt myself. Hmm. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Hmm. Could be right here. This is the congregation. We're gathered together today, right? Okay. Now watch. And there was a question one time, and I've answered it before. Let's answer it again. That day at Calvary, 1960, Brother Brown says, Sin did not start on the earth. 
Sin started in heaven. Lucifer, the devil, was a condemned creature for his disobedience before he ever struck the earth. Sin began in heaven where God put the angels and so forth upon the same basis that he puts human beings on. Now listen, they can't be saved because what about Lucifer's angels? No, they're condemned. But who's going to judge them? You and I are going to judge them. We're going to judge. Even, I took that scripture out for to save time, but the Bible tells us we will even judge angels. Hmm. Where God put the angels and so forth upon the same basis that he put human beings. Knowledge, the tree of knowledge. Tree of life and the tree of knowledge where man could take his choice. And when Lucifer was given the preeminence to make his choice, he wanted something better than God had. That started the trouble. Number seven, the greatest battle ever fought. This great first battle was ever fought began in heaven when Michael and his angels fought against Lucifer and his angels. It first started, the first battle was in heaven, so sin did not originate on earth, it originated in heaven. And then it was thrown down from heaven, cast out of heaven to the earth, and fell on human beings. All right, now these, these angels did not become human beings. They can't do that. Brother Branham tells you that many, 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 many times, and I agree 100%. No, but you let it anoint you. Why? Because it comes from the great anointed cherub. Yeah, right. He's anointed his imps and his disciples, and they go out and anoint you. You see what? See, God can get down in your soul and change you. Satan can't. Right. Yeah. He can pervert what God's already got. Right. Make you do things you don't even want to do. Right. Amen? Then the battle from angels became human battles. And Satan came to destroy God's creation, what God had created to be for himself. He had, Satan came to destroy this. That's what his purpose was, was to destroy it. Then the battle began here on earth, began in us, in us, and has been raging ever since. Amen? 2 Corinthians verse 11, of chapter 11, verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. But now remember, we got to put a few scriptures together because Jesus told the disciples, he said, if that light in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, if you think you're right and you think your light is right and it's not, how great is that darkness? Why? Because you're so dark, you think you're standing in the light. But it's the darkest time you've ever been in. Is that all right? Amen. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, we've seen many times before, we still see it now, how that Satan is trying to destroy the ministry. Look at all the... If you got your Bibles, you can turn to Genesis 1 or we'll read it here. We're finally getting there, Louise. Genesis 1, verse 1. And we'll start there and try to break this down if you don't mind. I want you to just be, bear with me. I've been thinking about this. And, and uh, when we look at things that doesn't have, we don't have quotes for, yeah, we might be presuming. But when we can take the Bible and the quotes, and then we let the Holy Ghost put it together for us. And you eliminate things that it can't be. Like Brother Dale said, that, you know, you go, and it's true. If you'd go through the process of elimination, do that. If you're sitting there sick today, if you're sitting here and there's some problem going on in your life, go through the process of elimination. Amen. Do I pray? Do I read my Bible? Do I go to church every time the doors are open? People just... People lather around in their sin and they go, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Ain't been to church in three weeks. Hadn't read your Bible in a month. Hmm. But I believe the message. But I believe the message. That's the, that's the most damning quote but I believe the message. I can go do what I want to do, but I believe the message. Yeah, you believe the message, all right? It's that when Lucifer told them, say, <laughs> them uh, 
demons up there and then 200,000, thousand of them got loosed. You know what Brother Brown said? Loosed on who? Us, the bride. All right. Let's be careful. So let's go to Genesis 1. Well, let's start right here. In the beginning, now he's God. Cause he, so now he's, he's already created something to worship. And there is, no, there is no account in Genesis 1 to tell you when Satan, or sorry, when Lucifer, because you have to call him Lucifer first. I created thee, O Lucifer. He didn't call him Satan or the devil then. He's Lucifer. See, God gave him a chance. Even Lucifer's called what? Light or light bearer. Lucifer's not this dark thing like you think he is. He's not some demon that you can't look at. No, he's beautiful. But what has man done, what has Satan done through man? Depicted him in movies and cartoons and you boogeyman. That ain't the devil. That's just one of his demons. But it ain't the devil. That thing that Brother Branham was allowed to show Billy Paul that looked like the uh, alley-oops. That was just, that wasn't Satan. That was one of his imps, right? That wasn't, a, that wasn't Satan. Satan's a beautiful man. That's why we're going to look at him and go, oh, where'd all that horror came from, come from? You're beautiful. It's close. But once we see, there's your quote, once we see, the two spirits working in the framework of the church and can what? Withstand it and discern it. With, discern it and then withstand it. So you got to discern it in your heart and withstand it. And the only way you can do it is by what? By the word of God. All right. So let's go. In the beginning, God. So God, now I believe he's got angels already created and I believe he's already got Lucifer. Because he wouldn't be God. Because God is a what? Object of worship. But remember, Brother Branham tells us, and so does Schofield, that that is Elohim. The self-existing God. Even though he has created angels. Something to worship him. But they're not human beings. They can never be a son and daughter of God. They can never make him father. They can make him God. Oh, that ought to get you right here. How that God has preserved one spot for me and you that nobody can touch. Satan, I don't think Satan understood that part. When the Genesis 1:26 man came out, and not just came out, or like Brother Dale was talking, vomiting up. No, he just moved over to another farm. Right. Listen, that Genesis 126 and 27 man was the creator. Or he's another person. Oh. Didn't Brother Brown say you're a little creator? Didn't he walk out there one day and said, let there be a squirrel? Something Satan can't do? He can pervert the squirrel, but he can't make one pop out on that limb like Brother Brown did. And he said, visions don't bleed. <laughs> what the, I love that. Visions don't bleed. He said, I shot that squirrel and it bled. So that was a creative act of God. Listen, Satan was as mad as a hornet that day. He said, I've been trying to do that for 65,000 years. And you got this little man down here, and he's out here creating squirrels everywhere. You know what, you know what the Lord said? He said, that's my son, and you're not. That came from me. It was a part of me. It always was me, and I created you because you got a beginning. Oh, well, I know that William Brown. He was born April 9th, 19, what? 06 or 09, whatever it was. God said, hang on a minute. That's because, remember back in the garden? That's what you did. You, 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 you are the one that had him come that way through the set perversion. You had him come, but what's inside of him that's doing the creating? Nah. 
You can't touch it. You don't even understand it. You don't even know where that came from. And that made Satan so mad he couldn't stand it. Same way within the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, and Satan's going, let me, and God's going, nope. Say, let me, nope. I think it ought to, see, that's where you get into the trouble. Because Satan was standing there going, no, I think that Milky Way needs to be over yonder. No, if God said it's right there, he should have known better. See, that's why what iniquity was found in his heart. He should have known better and kept his mouth shut, but he couldn't. That's the same way with us. We get in a lot of trouble when we what? And the earth was without form. Now, remember, he created the heaven and earth. I want you to look at something here real quick. <clears throat> Everybody okay? I want you to project yourself back into that space of time. Not Well, it's actually in eternity. And you're almighty God. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. If you got him inside of you, you can ask him. Because you know what happened? I believe Moses sat down one day and said, God, I want to know what went on in the garden. He said, okay, God. God said, okay, Moses, I'll, I'll tell you what happened in the garden and I'll let you write about your death if you want to while we're at it. We'll just write the whole five, first five books of the Bible. We'll tell you before the flood, after the flood, and even after you get gone. Amen? So why can't he let us just kind of Stand in, not stand in this place, but stand there and let that oneness inside of you project that image that, hey, that's the only way it could be because God created the heaven and earth. Now, Brother Brown said that period there could have been millions of years. He said nothing else could have happened. Right? So you got to go back to the prophet. Nothing happened for billions of years maybe. We'll read a quote in just a minute, maybe, where he said an atom broke off of the sun and whirled for millions of years, and then God said, stop. Everybody okay? <clears throat> and the earth was without form and void. Now remember, we can't tell exactly when Satan and Lucifer, I mean, when Lucifer and Michael fought, but I would say it was before the foundation of the world, because if sin started in heaven... So God created heaven and earth. Brother Luis, when he created heaven and earth, Satan's going, hmm, place to play. I can't create, but as soon as he creates it, I can step into it. Oh, my. You got to think like Satan now. But that's the way I was thinking the other day. I thought, man, God said, heaven and earth. The devil looks down and goes, hmm. I think that's where I'm going to start my business right there. I can't go back to heaven no more. I can't go back to where I was at. So here's something right here that I can start with. So it was that form and void. Because you know what? That's the same thing he did with you as Brother Luis was talking about. Your earth was without form and void. Why? Satan was in it. The devil was in your world. That's why it's without form and void. God can't create something evil like that. But Satan can pervert it. <clears throat> and the earth was without form and void, because remember now the battle is fixing to start on earth. Everybody okay with that? And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Who's darkness? Satan, you can't come over here where this light's at. Not anymore. Me and you can fellowship, we can talk to each other, but I'm fixing to divide this thing up. Is that all right? Because I'm going to tell you, watch. You know what the definition of light is? Put that up, Brother Anderson. Now, this is before the sun and the moon. Now, you, there's a lot of quotes, but I want to show you. Just watch this. Something that makes vision possible. You cannot see without light. Impossible 
to see without just a little form of light because the light receptors hit your eyes and then they bounce back out. Everybody got that? Try to look in the dark. <laughs> you can't look in a dark place. Something that makes vision possible. Let there be. Now remember, light can't be created are diminished. It's always there. Hmm. All right. The sensation aroused by stimulation of the visual receptors. Because watch what God said. Don't take it back to it. I'm going to read it right here. And God said, let there be light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God what? Saw the light. He stepped over in another form. Now I'll tell you what that form is. I'll let Brother Ram tell you. But watch this. Electromagnetic radiation of any wavelength that travels in a vacuum with a speed of 299, 792, 458 meters, which is 186,000 miles per second specifically, such radiation that is visible to the human eye. Because remember, there's ultraviolet lights and there's all, we're not going to get into that. Keep going on down further. Dawn, a source of light, a celestial body as night falls, electric light, color of notable lightness. Keep going up. We got all this. We know what some of that is. Watch this. Spiritual illumination. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 5. Um, Brother Dale read it last week. Inner light. Enlightenment reaching out and groping for a pathway to the light. Satan looks over and he goes, where did that come from? Sorry, Lucifer looks over and says, where did that come from? God said, you don't know anything about this. You don't know anything about this light. You can't touch this light. Now, Satan's going to go, well, I think I'll go create my own. See, remember, he's son of the morning. He's got all the, he's a bright light. But remember, his light is not created. It's artificial. His light is this right here. That's his light. God's light doesn't have an on switch and an off switch. But to get to where you and I can see the revelation... To where you and I can read Genesis 1 and understand what God's doing moving through an eternity, an eternal God that has no beginning, that has no end. He's getting ready to bring something to being. Spiritual illumination that light shines in the darkness. Enlightenment. Revelation. Revelation. God is getting ready. All right, now, you say, well, what about the heaven and earth? He's already created that. He's letting that sit there for a little while. We know he's the creator God because it said God created. Go back to Genesis 1, please. Thank you. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. He said, all right, devil, what I'm fixing to do from now on, you stay over here. Now, of course, Satan's already going now. I'm going, I'm going to the earth as soon as he gets it all good and finished. Remember, he's standing right there. Now watch. Let's continue to read the account, and then let's go back. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And what is light? It's something that makes vision possible. You and I would never know what went on in this account of Genesis had that light not shown up first. Because the sun is our natural light. It's right out here. It's what we, it sustains our natural life. But don't you think, Brother Luis, I, I've read many commentaries of, of uh, Jewish scholars. I read three of them the other night. And, and I agree with one of them, uh, two of them. I don't have a clue what they were talking about. But, but one of them was a little bit plain, and he said, you know what? He said, there stands God, or Jehovah, Yahweh, whatever they call him, you know, because he was Jewish. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, 
this great big ball comes behind him. Not the sun, but the sun's a part of it. Because you, I'll, I'm going to read to you what Brother Brown talks about clinkers. Put in clinkers. He says it six times. <laughs> Put in clinkers. He'll tell you what happened. He said something came off of something. It's what he's saying, Brother Wade. I believe that when he said, let there be light, that the whole universe just lit up. Because the commentator said, he said, you can't have creation without movement. Think about it. You can't have creation without movement. Even though God created the fish. Remember, once that fish came on earth, there had to be a firing mechanism that fired that thing. Why, do you, why are you at 98.6 degrees today? And where does that come from? Your body is 98.6 degrees. And it holds that way unless you're sick. Why does it hold that way? Things are firing off inside of you. So now take that as a creator. And let that thing fire out billions because he's fixing to create billions of stars. Billions. Listen, our sun just lights our solar system. It doesn't light all that stuff they find out there millions and millions and millions and millions of light years from here. The sun is for us. The S-O-N is for us. This is where we're going to live. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness. He called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now watch. Before the sun. Now remember, you got to have sun. Just a few minutes here. you got to have sunlight for photosynthesis. And what is it? Warmth. To do what? Fire your cells. C-E-L-L-S. Fire your cells. Amen? Does everybody understand that, what photosynthesis is? A plant starts. It has to get warm. From what? Sunlight. Pops open and then it comes out and then it has the green shoots and it goes through photosynthesis. It brings life and it grows. Now look, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament. Now, what's the firmament? Atmosphere. Everybody got that? Say amen. Atmosphere. You know why he made atmosphere? Because he's fixing to put living people on there. And animals first. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Remember, there was no rain until Noah's time. The ground watered in the mist. mist. And Brother Brown said the wells would come up out of the ground. It would water. My, what an irrigation system. Didn't have to worry about rain, Brother Donnie. It was just all coming up from out of the ground, and you just plant, you know, your plants just grew. God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning with the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together the water he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Now look, it's bringing forth something before the S-U-N is, is completely made that we need. So there's so much energy. I'm just, I know I'm not getting it to you. There's so much energy in this creation. So the whole place just, poof. talk about a big bang theory, they ain't got a clue. They ain't got a clue. I believe it was a big bang, but I don't believe it was nothing that man can control. It only took God to stop it when it needed to stop and to keep it going when it needs to keep going. So who is the light? John 1 says he was that light. John wasn't that light, but he was that light. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. So there was light. There was some kind of S-U-N light before he made the ball. Everybody got that? So why didn't he, listen, why didn't he just, while he was standing there, all of a sudden behind him comes this thing just huge. Ball of energy, which is all God. Brother Bram said all the stars, he said that's God writing his Bible in the stars. Amen? We'll read that in a minute. 
So we know basically that on the fourth day, he created the S-U-N, or he brought the S-U-N into being. Everybody got that? Because they said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon what? The earth. Now, when he said, let there be light, he didn't say just let there be light on earth. Let there be light. And then big photons just went off. And I believe it just exploded. But watch what Brother Brown says. Let's read this real quick and then we'll close. Number eight is the rising of the sun. Now, the sun at the rising of the sun. Now, there was a time when the world was laying in utter darkness. It was without form and void. It was all covered with water and was laying there in dark, dismal, gloomy atmosphere. And the Spirit of God moved upon the water and said, let there be light. God had a reason to do that. For down beneath that water, there were seeds that he had planted. And it had to have that sunlight to make it live. But now watch. He's not talking about the sun right here. Not the S-U-N. He said, and the first light was ever given in the earth was God's spoken word. When he said, all right, this is going to wake you up. Let there be light. <laughs> Buddy, let me tell you something. There was a chain reaction that went off. That you, There's no way you could see it with your natural human eye. Only God could look at it and say, that was good. You know why? Because everything I'm fixing to make is in that little ball or that huge ball right there. I'm going to make clinkers and I'm going to have a prophet talk about clinkers. We'll talk about it right here, but now watch. The first light ever given on earth was God's spoken word. The first light that ever struck the earth was God's spoken word. And he said, let there be light. Remember, it was the Logos, which the Logos is a light. Isn't that what he said? Amen. Amen. Let there be light, and there was light. That turned darkness into light in order to bring forth a creation of joy and life upon the earth. Revelation 21, verse 22. This is where I went to right here. Watch. And I saw no temple. Now, this is at the end. This is when we're going into the eternal future home. Amen? And we're going to have plants and animals, and we're going to have people. But there's something we don't have to have. Like we didn't have to have it to begin with, had there not been a fall. And the city had no need of the sun. Neither of the moon. For the glory of God. Amen. Everything's going back to Genesis. Glory. Right. Oh, that future home is going to what? It's going to be lit up. Right. Yeah. By let there be that was millions of years ago. He said, let there be light and there has not been darkness in him at all. Amen. And even when we get to the future home, Brother John, you ain't got to turn a switch when you go in your house. Amen. You are the light. The Lamb is the light, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Into what? The light. All right, we got another one. Two or three witnesses. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 60. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord, the Creator, and now His bride in a multiple form that wasn't there, but she was in Him. If you tonight don't think that you were there, you weren't. But you should be able to say, Oh God, when you said, Let there be light, I jumped up and said, Amen. Where did the sun... I know we weren't people. But the joy of the Father is what's inside of Him. You can't find me in Him back before I was born because you didn't know. That's natural. But a spiritual God that knows every person, every, every son and daughter of God by name, He knows exactly. You know where they were? And what was the first light on the earth? The spoken word of God. How did you get here? 
You got here by the spoken word of God. If you God didn't speak to your heart, you wouldn't be sitting here tonight. So let there be light. And you go, yeah, it's good. Where were you, Job? When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Why? They were inside of the Creator. I couldn't have done this a week ago. The sun shall no more light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give any light. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. When we walk into that city, we're the light. When we walk outside of that city, we're the light. Didn't Jesus tell us, say, you are the light of the world? Why hide it under a bushel? I'm sorry, I feel good. This is a creation. Why did Brother Brown tell us we're a continuation of that creation? Because of the fall, there had to be at the beginning of the creation of God, like Brother Dale's talking about. But before that, you were never created. You always were. That soul inside of you has a fire that can light a whole planet and make it and go live on it. Now who showed William Man Branham that? God showed it to him. He showed him what he had. He said, tell my people what they've got. Brother Brown didn't come to change the Bible. He came to tell us what's already been said. Are we living it? Well, I didn't get many amens on that one. But the sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning, that's not a.m., that's the days of you mourning and crying will be over. But you know what? We get a little taste of that here. Because we're going to be changed. Our future home will be right here. And we're going to just step over into another dimension. Let man let loose what? Artificial light, atomic bombs. But can you see... There God stood and said, let there be light. And poof, it's never changed since. Right. And if there hadn't have been a fall, we wouldn't have needed the sun or moon. Because you know what? After the fall's over, that proves we don't need it. Because you're the light. But see, you're hidden now. See, ever, you see the pictures of Jesus with Mary holding Jesus and there's this little halo around his head, little halo around her I thought it was a secret. You and I are a secret light to this world. They look at you and go, well, you're just a 20-something-year-old kid. You have, oh, you're just as worldly as the rest of them. Then you go, no. No, there's, there's, there's something. There's something got turned on. There's something got placed in my heart. And I can trace it back to where God stood in eternity and said, let there be light. And I, my illumination comes from the Word of God. Your illumination should come from the Word of God. Sorry I didn't take you long, but I'm going to read this one last quote because Brother Branham, watch. There's six quotes, but I brought just one. <clears throat> when I get finished with this quote, musicians come. And now the Bible teaches us that the Logos went out from God. Or I might say all of the God becoming His first body form when the Logos went out of God. Now, it's 1953. Let's look what it looked like. No one has seen the Father at any time. Nowhere. Never did. Never will. Right. <clears throat> but what is the Logos? That's the light. But then the Logos that went out of him became like a little halo of light. Let's see it playing yonder like a child before the door set for the Father. You know what he's saying when he says that? 
here's daddy sitting in the living room and we're looking down at our kid playing with um, Legos or Lincoln Logs. Or, that's what he's talking about. A child playing. Because what's he fixing to do? He's fixing to say, let there be. Let there be. Milky Way, go over here. Yeah. Oh, so much power. But where's that power tonight? It's in you. You brought it with you. If you didn't bring it with you, it's here for you to get. <clears throat> and now I can see him as he moves over here. And he draws into his memory or his mind. <laughs> what about you have an unlimited memory? You go, all right, I'm going to make a Milky Way. It's going to have 874 million stars, and I'm going to put it right over there. Try that sometime. <clears throat> we can't hardly get our furniture rearranged in our house. And now I can see him as he moves over here, and he draws in his memory or his mind a picture of what the world would, should be. Now, there's not a star or nothing. I hear him say, let there be. Hold on now. And an atom broke under. What is a light? It's when atoms and photons beat each other, they hit on each other, and it creates a spark. And when it did, the sun came into this. But now watch. You say, oh, no, no, you've done. No, the, look, watch what he's saying. And when it did, the sun came into existence. Great big ball. Not the sun like we got, but that sun is inside of that because watch what he's saying. The sun came into existence and began to whirl. She burned for millions of years and millions and millions of years. After a while, I see a clinker fly off of it. Off of it. Not coming from somewhere else. A clinker went off of this great big let there be light ball. Everybody got that? Yeah. Not the sun that we have. It was created on the fourth day. You cannot go against the Bible. But like I said, when he said, let there be light, why didn't this great, I can just see this great big energy come out into the universe. But inside of it was the stars. Inside of it was the sun that we live by. Because we're not the only, we are the only pebbles on the beach, but we're not the only sun or solar system. All right? After a while, I see a clinker fly off of it. Brother Brown makes a noise. Whew. What is it? The first star that flew from the sun. So if you kept the sun at this, at, at our, we say little, little bit, then it's, it must be getting smaller because there's a clinker going off of it. He watches it fall for a few million years and he stops it. Then another one flies off. And he lets it fall a few million years and stops it. What's he doing? He's writing his first Bible from not the sun that we get up on in the morning, from that sun that he created, that big boom. And here's this great big ball of energy. And you know who's standing in the middle of it? The creator. The Logos is standing right in the middle of it. To me, I can see it just as plain as day. He's standing there just like this, and this great big thing's behind him, and the devil's going, what are you fixing to do? And he's going, flicks his finger, and there goes a star. He waits a little while longer, and he flicks his finger, and that ball gets a little bit smaller, because to me, I think that's as much God out there as it is here, as far as his creation. You and I, we know, I know, listen, he's, he's what we care about. But why did he put it all up there first? That's my whole point. Musicians come. My whole point is why did God put the first Bible in the stars if that wasn't important? Because that was the first Bible. That was the first way man navigated. That was the first way he knew about God was from the stars that came off of that big ball. And when God got finished, I believe he did, everything clinked off that sun and it became the size that we needed. Because <clears throat> then Brother Branham, another quote, he said, all right, he said, now the earth is too far. He said, I'm just going to bring it back. 93 million miles away. That way we can have summer, winter, fall. It'll be my word. It'll be my word made manifest. And this earth is where we're going to live. I'm going to put my children on it. And I'm going to take care of it. And I'm going to put a garden in there. And I know what you're going to do, Lucifer. But don't worry. Job said, I know my Redeemer living. 
I believe he got a revelation that he looked back in time. Cause he said, Job, where were you when the sons of God shot? I believe he projected Job back. Job had a revelation. Right. He, has a, he had a light experience, a revelation that something happened and now Job's here in this bad situation, but then he looks back and he sees him again and he said, oh, that man's coming to get me. Yeah. Folks, that's not a hope. That's a promise of Almighty God. He's coming back to get us. He will not let, our, let that creation just be nothing. Let's stand our feet. God bless you. I love that definition. Something that makes vision possible. The sensual sensation aroused by stimulation of the visual receptors. How, who in here likes darkness? We all like light. When that light comes on in the morning, even if it may be just a light in your house, you feel more comfortable than you do in the darkness. It's what much more in the spiritual light. When we get up out of the bed and we start our day, we'll walk in the light, such a beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. <clears throat> all ye saints of light, light proclaim. There you go. Jesus, the light of the world, life and mercy in his name. Jesus, the light of the world, oh, we'll walk in the light, such a beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the Have you ever been on a cold morning? or I know some of us at deer hunt and different things. Have you ever been in a place to where you, you just couldn't get warm? Why? Because there was no sunlight. I've had my feet be so froze you couldn't feel them, Brother Gary, but I'd find some light coming through the woods and I'd stick my toe. How many of you done that? Brother Danny's done it. You'll find that sunlight and I'll guarantee you in just a few minutes you'll feel that what? Warm light. Listen, that's an energy. Think about this. That's an energy that took 40,000 years to get to the top of the sun and then go 93 million miles. <clears throat> what God's done for us, people, just in the natural. I need some sunlight on my shoes, God. Okay. It's been produced several thousand years ago. It'll be there in just a few minutes. Same way with the spiritual. He's not going to leave you cold and formal. But you got to get to where the light is. You can't walk in darkness. <coughs> light is a form of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. God decided to change his form to a bride and the coldest this world's ever been there's always been a bride but when we leave this place brother Bob <clears throat> the light will be gone there'll be no more light until we come back in the millennium but not really until we come back in the future home because John saw that big bright ball come down out of heaven and Brother Bram says there'll be no night. There'll be no day inside that city. Why? You don't need the sunshine anymore. You need that let there be. Just as Brother Dale was telling y'all the other night, God was pleased to dwell in Jesus Christ. 
When you got born again, you had a River Jordan experience. God came down with that heavenly light and said, I am pleased to reside right here. If you have not had that experience tonight, do not fall asleep because it may be your last time. Please, get that warmth in here. I'd rather have it in here. I can put on enough clothes and I can turn on a heater. But when the coldness of hell comes on top of you, you need a light from somewhere else. You don't need a light. Bulb. They've done made light now where LED light don't even give off any, don't give off any heat. Artificial. Satan has artificial light. But God never has artificial light. Never had it, never will have it. And ye are the light. Oh, Jesus. Sing that chorus one more time and you're dismissed. <clears throat> oh, we'll walk in the light. Go with God. You're dismissed. If for light, come where the dew drops of mercy are bright. Oh, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, <clears throat> come confess Him as your King. Jesus, Jesus 